The new year is bringing new anime that fans across the world will love. Are you ready for a series about historical warlords and the bodies of modern pet dogs? How about the story of a girl who realizes she's the villain in a video game? All this and more are in store for 2020. Junji Ito is horror manga's undisputed king. If anything from his vast library of work can be considered his magnum opus, however, it is Uzumaki, the slow, sordid chronicle of one small town's descent into madness. The story encompasses everything from cannibalistic body horror to isolation-induced psychosis. Ito's always had a gift for balancing absurdism with horror, but Uzumaki takes it further than ever before. Uzumaki has been adapted before, most notably as a series of video games and a 2000 live-action movie. Nothing, however, has managed to equal its source material and sheer intensity until now. In partnership with Adult Swim, Production IG has produced a four-episode adaptation that will air concurrently in Japan and the United States. Ito's densely inked style is a massive challenge to animate, but teaser trailers reveal uniquely detailed visuals that should intrigue newbies and seasoned fans alike. Just make sure you watch this one with the lights on. It might have taken five years longer than expected, but at last, the finale of the rebuild of Evangelion series has a premiere date. These films have always been unique, though they're most widely known as a retelling of the original Neon Genesis Evangelion anime series. They've grown steadily different from the source material with each installment. Entirely new characters have taken center stage. Old characters have been woven into the narrative far earlier than in the original series, and a completely different ending is promised to close out the series. If the previous films are anything to go by, 3.0 plus 1.0 will be an innovative presentation of everything that makes Evangelion the anime touchstone it is. From dazzling animation to a clear-eyed look at trauma on the precipice of adulthood, what little has been revealed of the film promises a breathtaking example of why anime matters and why Evangelion won't be fading into memory anytime soon. <sighs> no need for thanks. It's the duty of the elite to protect the ignorant masses. Drifting Dragons follows the experiences of the crew of a massive draking airship dedicated to hunting dragons. The anime looks something of a cross between Cowboy Bebop and Attack on Titan. The crew, a ragtag bunch from all walks of life, live from hunt to hunt, using all their wits to conquer beasts hundreds of times their size and ensure full bellies and coffers. The anime's use of CG promises to retain the lush detail of the manga, while providing its own spin on Drifting Dragon's cloud-dappled world. Early footage is positively sweeping. By air or on land, Drifting Dragons looks ready to impress with a whole new type of dragon slaying. Isekai anime has dominated the scene for years now with its tales of everyday people dropped into fantasy worlds. Sometimes they're reincarnated as low-level slimes, sometimes they're allowed to bring their smartphone, and sometimes they're simply stranded. One thing unites them all, making escapism totally literal. My next life as a villainess follows this formula, for the most part. Upon sustaining a head injury, our heroine realizes that she, Duchess Katarina Claes, was once a high school girl obsessed with the game Fortune Lover, in which she now resides. Even more shockingly, she remembers that Katarina is rival to the player character for the prince's affections, and thus the bad guy. Like most isekai, my next life is about the wonder and strangeness of a different world, but this one is more obstacle course than playground. What ensues is a delightfully wry look at a well-worn genre with as much humor as it has heart. Viewers are sure to fall in love with Katarina, whose dogged determination to survive in a world built to destroy her yields fascinating plot twists and genuine emotion. Fashion has long proved to be a fertile source of subject matter for anime, Samurai Flamenco follows the adventures of a part-time model, Paradise Kiss takes a look at the struggling beginnings of a career in fashion design, and Kill La Kill imagines clothing as control. Smile Down the Runway is set to continue the proud tradition of deeply fashionable anime with its own DIY flair. Chiyuki, born into a family already embedded in the fashion industry, has dreamed of becoming a model for years. Unfortunately, adolescence only saw her grow to 5'2" far too short to walk the runway, even at the most obscure fashion week. Then she discovers Ikuto, a shy classmate who has a tremendous talent for fashion design that he has no idea how to explore. Together, they decide to take on the world of fashion despite their handicaps, and manage to find that what's held them back might actually be assets in disguise. Smile Down the Runway's wholehearted love of the arts promises to impress, 
especially when explored through such dauntless, lovable characters as Chiyuki and Ikuto. They might be short, shy, and underfunded, but as Coco Chanel once said, success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. What a long, strange trip it's been for Masamune Shiro's landmark science fiction manga. It's been adapted into multiple award-winning anime series, influenced culture-conquering art such as The Matrix, been made into a variety of video games, and most recently transformed into a live-action feature. 2020 will see the premiere of yet another Ghost in the Shell adaptation, this one subtitled Standalone Complex 2045. And it promises to be another take on the story that's well worth watching. Uniquely, SAC 2045 will use CGI animation of a style rarely employed in anime. The trailer, released by Netflix in October, reveals a look at a series that is as brief as it is breathtaking. Major Kusanagi rendered in three dimensions appreciating the quiet of a desolate landscape. SAC 2045 looks to be a groundbreaking blend between the anime standby and new frontiers in animation. In other words, exactly what a story set on the bleeding edge of progress should be. Keep Your Hands Off Aizoken consists of three high school girls looking to make their mark on the world of animation. These aren't the doe-eyed maidens of K-On, however. The members of the Motion Pictures Club are bona fide weirdos who like army surplus equipment and obscure animation trivia. Director Masaki Yuasa, the visionary behind Ping Pong and Devilman Crybaby, isn't just the perfect choice to adapt the oddball manga. He might just be the only person who could truly do it justice. Our heroes inhabit a world that shifts from the mundane to the magical as they explore their imaginations. That sort of magical realism is precisely what Yuasa excels at capturing, and likely what drew him to the manga in the first place. Like his previous work, Keep Your Hands Off Aizoken aims for the heights of what is possible in animation and will likely get there in high, strange style. Dorohe Doro has been held in high esteem by manga fans since its 2000 debut. A post-apocalyptic saga of violence, magic, and unlikely alliances, its hero is Kaimon, a man stripped of his memories and left with a reptilian head after a run-in with a sorcerer. His world is split in two. There's the Hole, the derelict home of humanity, and there's the world of the sorcerers. Those of the latter camp visit the Hole to practice their abilities on its vulnerable denizens, Kaimon being one of that unfortunate number. This cruel dichotomy is disrupted when Kaimon sets out to find the sorcerer who disfigured him and discovers newfound abilities that will help even the odds between him and those with magic at their disposal. Quite a lot of 2000s anime aimed to capture Dorohedoro's signature blend of horror, humor, and fantasy. Yet even without that field of imitators, it has always stood out as singularly confident, visionary, and gloriously strange. Trailers and promotional spots reveal an anime adaptation every inch as stunning and cheeky as its source material leaving fans with only one unanswered question. How did it take this long for Dorohedoro to get an anime of its own in the first place? Oda Nobunaga, a feudal lord of 16th century Japan, casts a long shadow over the nation's history. Regarded as one of Japan's great unifiers, his reign was as marked by free trade, innovative art, and advances in military strategy as it was by brutal suppression of his opponents. Unsurprisingly, his fictional portrayals number in the hundreds. Nobunaga has appeared in everything from Pokémon to the Sengoku Basara video games. Sometimes he's the villain, sometimes he's the hero, and sometimes he's somewhere in between. But over and over again, he is used as an inspiration for storytelling. Despite all this competition, Oda Cinnamon Nobunaga will still manage to provide a new twist on the tale by portraying the legendary lord as a dog. In this anime, Nobunaga's death in the infamous Honnoji incident was immediately followed by his reincarnation as a modern-day Shiba Inu named Cinnamon. But Nobunaga isn't alone. It turns out that a plethora of figures from Japan's Sengoku or Warring States period have been brought back to life as pet dogs. Legendary tactician Date Masamune is now a French bulldog. Fearsome commander Takeda Shingen is now a Pomeranian. Whether you're a longtime Japanese history buff or a curious fan looking for something new, Oda Shinoman Nobunaga looks to be an anime unlike anything else on the air. It's not every anime series that can release a single piece of key visual art and inspire ardent discussion, but anything made by Studio Trigger tends to get that treatment. Since its 2013 debut with Little Witch Academia, Trigger has produced smash hit after smash hit. Its most recent work, the psychedelic action Fantasia, Promare, managed to make $1 million on only 30 screens in North America, prompting a return to theaters that few anime films have ever been granted in the English-speaking market. Enter Brand New Animal, 
All fans have to slaver over is a single image. What looks to be an anthropomorphic wolf in a trench coat and a basketball-toting girl with squirrel-like features standing against a neon-splashed backdrop of skyscrapers and billboards. If the upright cheetah and athleisure behind them is any indication, theirs is a world of humanoid animals like Zootopia or Beastars, albeit one rendered according to Trigger's highly saturated, ultra-modern aesthetic. So far, those are the only details fans have to pick apart, but Trigger has inspired the confidence to make even those scant clues enough to make brand new animal and animate a watch. There are series that take a while to find their footing, and then there is anime like The Promised Neverland. Season 1 wastes no time stranding its fans alongside its heroes in a truly disorienting premise, a world ruled by demons in which oblivious children are raised as meat. Emma, Ray, and Norman, whose lives have been lived entirely within the confines of the sun-dappled orphanage that is, in fact, a farm, stumbled upon this horrifying fact by accident. The first season sees their daring quest to escape take shape and ultimately succeed, climaxing in their first sunrise beyond the walls of the orphanage in the season finale. It was an immediate sensation, hooking fans left and right with its potent blend of horror and heart, all brought home by a kid's eye view. The second season promises more of this at an even more startling level of intensity. Though the kids have escaped their captors, they have become completely alone. What does the world beyond the walls even look like? If demons who eat children command such power within it, who of their number will survive it and how? What structures of power maintain the orphanage system and what will it take to render it asunder? Some of these questions might be answered in season two, some might not, but we'll all be watching to find out. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.